Now, a social media boycott begins today across the world of sport, from players and organisations to broadcasters and newspapers. It's hoped that the protest will pre pressure on the likes of Facebook, Instagram and Twitter to do more to stop the abuse and punishment that happens online. Now, I'm joined now by uh, Dr Ahmed. He's a lecturer in digital business at the Newcastle University Business School in England and specialises in social media and sport. Thank you very very much for joining me today. What difference, if any, do you think this boycott will make? Hi, so, so thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, so I think uh, as the clubs have kind of launched this uh, uh, boycott, one of the things that um, is, is going to happen is it's generated a lot of media interest. And it's got people talking about what's actually been, been happening uh, over the last uh, few, few years. So uh, because of this kind of increased interest, it, it has put a little bit of pressure on the social media companies uh, to kind of look into how uh, they can handle uh, that kind of processes better. And in, in recent uh, days as well, social media companies have actually had to come out and detail uh, the steps that they're going to kind of take in, in the future. But the thing is, you know, many of the footballers, are, you know, they're very valuable individuals and they're very valuable to companies who, you know, who use them as um, as iconic figures in their marketing. I wonder whether there is a danger that some of the people involved in this will end up effectively biting the hand that feeds them. Yep. Uh, so that, that, that is a, a good point, but it can also work, work the other way as, as well. So if you look at some of the most followed um, users on the likes of Twitter, for instance, a, a lot of those are uh, kind of uh, sports athletes, in particular uh, soccer or, or football players actually rank uh, within the, the kind of most active users on the platform, generating a lot of activity for these social media companies. And then if they're deciding to kind of boycott um, the, the platforms in, in the short term, uh, it might have a little bit of effect. But if they keep uh, kind of doing these types of, of boycotts, it might re reduce the overall activity on, on the platforms themselves. Now, the footballer Marcus Rashford's campaigns against things like child poverty and hunger, they were very much sustained by active social media use. I mean, do boycotts like this actually undermine social media as a force for good? And a force for change. Yep. So uh, that's that's a good point. So there are kind of positives and, and negatives of of uh, social media. So we saw through uh, Rashford's campaign that uh, the kind of positive use of of social media, but because um, it's kind of unfiltered public opinion that can be shared on on these platforms, I do think there needs to be better systems in place for kind of filtering and, and blocking out uh, spam. We do a lot of research looking at the kind of tweets and, and social media posts received by athletes. And we do find that they are kind of receiving a lot of uh, abuse and, and, and so forth that could potentially be, be filtered out. OK, we're going to have to leave it there for the moment. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not this works. Dr Ahmed, thank you very much for your time today. Fine, no worries. Thank you. <laughs>